professional bass fishing. And in 2001, this was never more evident. Today, winning the Classic brings fortune and fame, but more importantly, it's the opportunity for one angler to be crowned bass fishing's newest world champion. The Bassmasters Classic is definitely, without a doubt, the, the number one event in the sport. Boom! To qualify for that tournament is uh, probably one of the best feelings a fisherman can have. That's what I gear my year toward, is getting back to the Bassmaster Classic. It can make your whole year, or it can make somebody's career. The Classic is just an amazing event. There's nothing quite like the Classic. The Classic is a week-long celebration of the whole sport. It's altogether different. There's not another tournament like it anyway. There's so much emphasis put on the Bassmaster Classic now that uh, it is the world championship. To take the, the, the marquee event in bass fishing to cities that are well known for NFL crowds and in the case of New Orleans Super Bowls, it, it, it says a lot. Louisiana Superdome has the, the magic. It's the biggest and the best. And for an indoor fishing event to be there was shocking. If I didn't know any better, I think the Saints had just scored. Anytime we go to a huge venue like that, it's showing the world, hey, bass fishing's growing. We had tremendous crowds, huge crowds, you know, upwards of 30 some odd thousand people. You start looking around thinking, all these people come to see somebody catch fish. Nine pounds, six ounces. You gotta appreciate the fans that we have because they they are diehards, there's no doubt about it. That many people show up for a fishing tournament is still just amazing. And with ESPN's purchase of BASS in April of 2001, the worldwide leader in sports set out to put the Super Bowl of bass fishing on the biggest possible stage. I'll tell you straight out, this here is a fish story. ESPN purchases bass in the spring of 2001 and then announces we're going to have same-day coverage of the Classic. Unheard of. Live from the Superdome in New Orleans, Louisiana. They really gave this event major league effort the way they would any other major event. Hi, everybody. Ron Frank from the lawn with Jerry McKinnis. The weigh-in has just ended, and guess where all the people have come? A mention on Sports Center. Fishy highlights from the Bass Masters Classic. Who would have thought that someday we'd hear Boomer, you know, announcing the Bass Masters Classic? This is Sports Center. By being alert. You're going to make fewer mistakes than your opponents. They had me on there, and then they had, like, hockey and football. Football! It's the deck. Fish is loose. Football! Like, looking at the TV, saying, look, that's me right there. Yeah, because I grabbed the fish, and it fumbled around the front deck, and the guy in sports there, he said, fumble! And we've got a fish story coming up as well. We'll head to the Big Easy for the Bass Masters Classic. In 2001, the Bassmasters Classic was held at the Louisiana Delta for the second time in three years. But unlike many past classic waters, anglers not only had to determine what technique would catch fish, but first, they had to find the fish. The Louisiana Delta is such a diverse fishery, hundreds of thousands of acres of, of excellent bass fishing. It's just grass and canals, and they just go everywhere. You can get lost down there so easy, it's it's unbelievable. It's such a vast body of water, you can't fish at all. You really got to make some strategy decisions. Where is my best chance to win this tournament? Most intimidating body of water I've ever fished in my life. Delta is not a friendly place to fish a lot of times, because if anything goes wrong, you can be stuck out there for days, but the Delta's massive without a doubt. Finding fish on the Louisiana Delta's a pretty tough chore. Every professional sport has had a dominant figure who took it to a higher level. In bass fishing, that figure is Kevin Van Dam. When I first met uh, Kevin Van Dam, my first impression of him was probably summed up in one word, cocky. He was just a big, tall, lanky kid from Kalamazoo, Michigan, as far as I knew. And this little bitty skinny guy walked up to me and he said, 
Hi, I'm Kevin Van Dam, and I'm going to kick your butt next year. I'm sure I was, you know, downright cocky. I mean, the kid had a burning desire to dominate this sport. He crashed the scene. Uh, nobody really knew who he was, and he just came on the scene like gangbuster. I first started out, I had a string of, like, 23 tournaments in a row where I finished in the money. And, you know, I, I guess I wasn't real uh, ashamed to tell people about it, but, you know, I, I didn't know any better. Nobody told me that I shouldn't be able to, to do well in, in these tournaments. I did not think that he would maintain uh, the pace that he was on, but he did. In a relatively short career, Kevin Van Dam just became the total package. The 2001 Bassmasters Classic Yearbook is brought to you by Bush Beer, Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, and Triton, a new breed of fishing boats by Earl Bentz. Every year I've spoken with Kevin Van Dam, he's told me he felt like he was going to win the Classic. This time, he had no confidence. I had a terrible practice. I never caught a two-pounder in seven days. Kevin had had one of the worst practices, so he said, for any classic he's ever fished. If you had told him that he was going to make a run at that classic, you know, two weeks before the classic started, uh, he'd have found it very hard to believe. Thought, boy, this is, you know, going to be a, another bad year. I might even not even catch a bass in, in the tournament. Here's a guy who accomplished things that, you know, guys have been in the sport 30 years hadn't accomplished. It's like Kevin is over here in a separate category, and then all the rest of us are over here. He had won three anglers of the year. He had won several tournaments. Uh, he'd made runs at the Classic before, but never quite got over the hump. You know, he'd never missed a Classic in his entire career. Van Dam is, uh, is goal-oriented. And he is such a competitor that it aided him. I believe this, that it aided him that he had won the Classic. When you're the number one angler in the world, you don't have to win the Classic to prove to everybody that you're a good fisherman. But still, that's a lot for the, this 10, 11, 12 Classic and you still haven't won one. 18 pounds and 80 ounces! There's your leader, folks. You may win this tournament. It was getting increasingly more of a burden to him, and it was growing like this little monster every year. It got to the point where I was getting pretty down about the classics. You know, I mean, it's a tournament that I wanted to win so badly. It was getting to Kevin, but as much as I would try to tell him, you know, you're you're young yet, and you'll do it. Because I've tried and failed so many times, and. And on top of that, you know, the media is like, well, you know, he's probably one of the best fishermen to never win a classic. He hasn't been fishing that long that it should have been an issue. But because of all of his success, um, as a reporter, I believe Tim Tucker, asked him during a press conference about being uh, the best known fisherman who hadn't won a classic. And he said, Kevin says, you've been close a lot of times before and you haven't been able to win a classic. Probably the most successful guy to never win a classic. How do you feel? You know, you know so it's just those thoughts again coming into your mind. He was the best fisherman ever to have won a major at that point. Kind of the fishing version of David Duall in golf. And I thought, well, here's another classic going to come and go that, you know, I, I'm just not going to be in contention for. One who has won the classic is Arkansas's Mark Davis. And in 2001, he added a third Angler of the Year title to his resume. But it has not been an easy road for the soft-spoken man from Mount Ida, Arkansas. It's hard to win Angler of the Year. I mean, you fight all year long to put yourself in that position to win. During the 98 season, when I won Angler of the Year, my shoulders and elbow started giving me a lot of trouble. Then during the 99 season, it, I got to where I couldn't fish. I mean, here's a guy that was in such physical pain that he had to fish with a spinning rod. Couldn't even hardly turn a crank on a reel. I was worthless. 
couldn't do anything, a lot of pain. He had taken so many, um, like, ibuprofen-type pills, and that didn't work anymore. It was so painful, he couldn't even set the hook when he was fishing. It was tough on him mentally because he didn't know if he would ever be back in fishing. It could be a career-ending injury. I was, I was afraid. I was afraid my career, my fishing career was over. After missing the 2000 Classic, I realized then, I said, you know, it's either now or never. I can't start missing too many Classics in a row. You miss one now and then, you're okay, but you can't start missing two and three in a row. So I went to a surgeon, sports medicine surgeon. Had the surgeries, it was tough, it was hard going, a lot of rehab. He physically rehabilitates himself, he mentally rehabilitates himself. I had to start pretty much all over again, you know, and, and, and get all that stuff working again. He stood in the front yard and cast reels and baits and things and used them for two or three weeks every day. Get my cast down, get my hook set down. But then, you know, once I got it back, I was back. Back to the upper echelon of the sport, and he wins his third BASS Angler of the Year. First came back from his uh, first surgery, he won Angler of the Year. This year, this past year, he had his elbows, both his arms done at the same time, and he won Angler of the Year again. Every time they throw him a curve, he comes back stronger than ever. <laughs> the year after my surgery was my most consistent year ever. If you uh, look at all my the three Angler of the Year tiles, that was the year that was it was the easiest for me. Mark Davis became only the fourth guy to ever win three. You know, to win three or more, so it was quite an accomplishment. Winning three anglers a year, that's, that's pretty studly right there. 2001 chapter of the Mark Davis story is, uh, I'm not sure Hollywood would buy it. I think any father would, would say the same thing, and to, to see your son succeed, to follow you in the sport, but not only to follow, but, but to achieve the same things and, and perhaps even go higher. That, that's the dream of every father. Every father wants his son to follow in his footsteps, and professional bass anglers are no different. One extending the family legacy is Keith Green, son of bass fishing pioneer Ricky Green, who qualified for his first classic in 2001. Ricky Green was known as Mr. Consistency. He was a great in I think he qualified for like 14 straight classics. We had a pretty good record going. Oh, Ricky was one of those anglers that I read about before I get in, really got involved in the sport. And I'd read Bassmasters, Ricky Green. He's one of my heroes. I made a living at it since uh, 1974. I, I have no complaints. Back in those days, I just really didn't realize what a a big pro he was. He was just dad to me and we went fishing together. I didn't realize what a big shot <laughs> I was getting for a father-in-law. I've, I've had my day. I'm, I'm uh, satisfied with my life. I, I love to win the classic. I hope that Keith can, can go on and uh, do some of those things that I didn't get to do. Comes from a long line of fishermen. His dad is the very well-known veteran pro Ricky Green. Here's Keith Green. I'm, I'm just glad he, he carried the Green name on to to the Classic in 2001. It's always been a dream, and I wanted to make that Classic, and he's always wanted me to get there. And uh, last year was our my first time, so uh, that was exciting for him, I know. You know, hopefully it started a string like he did. He made 14 in a row, and, and uh, I hope that I fish as many as he did at least. It was a, uh, an extremely good feeling. I was very, very proud of him. He was so proud. He wanted everybody to know that was his boy up there. <laughs> I know Ricky's the proudest dad in the world. It's a drive of mine to win it, but you know, him being coming in second and being so close and he wants to win this Bassmaster Classic for mom and dad. I've watched him struggle and, and make his living and, and do it all these years and, and know that that's a, a dream of his and I know he'd rather see me win it than him, but I'd like to hand that trophy to him. As in every tournament, weather plays a pivotal role. And at the 2001 Classic, Tropical Storm Barry changed everything. Tropical Storm Barry, I think, affected a lot of the, uh, the guys' fishing strategies because of the rising tide. The wind and the tide 
uh, rivers, everything to the point where instead of having low water, you had high water. Plus, we had a full moon, which gives you an abnormal high tide, and it, that, that affected it all. The wind was blowing so hard, I actually had to go up to a three-quarter ounce jig just to fish it. When you have a storm out there, it's always going to make the waters a lot higher and make it a lot dirtier, and that really makes the fishing very unstable. Anytime the tide is rising on those deltas, it definitely makes for a lot tougher fishing. I knew that the fishing was going to deteriorate close to that storm, which was down in the Venice area each day. I knew that if I was going to win in New Orleans, because I'd been there several times before, I knew how I had to fish, and I knew what I had to do. I went back to the area that I'd fished the other previous three tournaments in, and pretty quickly I caught a pretty decent limit, you know, and, and I thought, well, you know, at least I got a limit. The bite was so tough that it was all you could do just to catch five keepers a day. I went back and weighed them in, and I'm in third place with, you know, this 10 or 11 pounds or whatever it was that I caught. And we got this big tropical storm brewing out in the Gulf, and it's coming towards the Venice area. The water came up on me about a foot and a half each day. The water that the boat was pumping on the bottom was five foot deep now. I said, now I really got a chance to do this. You know, I mean, my confidence was from when I first started there to an all-time low to where my confidence was, you know, right at an all-time high. And, uh, you know, the next couple days, it, it was tough mentally, especially that last day. I mean, it was brutal. They're nervous on the inside. They don't want to show it, of course. And it's a big mind game. There on the second day when I lost a couple fish, either one of them would have won the tournament for me. So coming back in that uh, second day was a long trip, but going out the third day was even longer. It was extremely tight race one in the last day. You know, the top five positions that were within a half a fish. I thought I'd ruined it for myself, but I knew only one pound back that I still had the potential to win. I had several press boats around me the last day, and, and uh, I had four fish, and I heard the guy tell one of the other uh, press observers there that he had just left Van Dam, and Van Dam only had two fish. And I thought, well, wow, I got a chance here. And then just wasn't five minutes later, I caught my fifth fish, and it was, you know, a nice two and a half pounder. And I thought, man, I think maybe, you know, this might be it. Oh, yeah. It's like 12, and I had a limit, and Kevin had only had one fish, or didn't have hardly any fish like that. So I thought, well, maybe here's the, here's the one day he's actually not going to catch a limit. I had four pretty decent fish, and one just a 12 incher that was, you know, just a keeper. If I can call that 12-incher, I'll win the Classic. And I fished that whole time without a bite. So that made that trip the whole way in. I'm wondering, boy, you know, it's, I wonder, you know, is that 12-incher going to haunt me? I had the feeling that maybe I had enough the whole way back. You know, I had a long, a longer boat ride of 75 miles over to where I was fishing. So I had a lot of time to think about it. You know, that was a long ride. Ride all the way there, ride all the way back, because I had a lot of time to sit and think about what was happening at the way in. And that was the thought, so, you know, do I got enough? Am I going to win this time, or am I going to fall just short again? It's 90 miles back, so I had plenty of, plenty of time to think about it. The 2001 Bassmasters Classic Yearbook is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats and Berkeley Catch More Fish. When they pull you into that Coliseum and there's 40,000 people there cheering you on, everybody gets goosebumps running up and down their neck. When you've got the best fishermen in the world who are driven into the arena and they have an opportunity to pull their fish from the live well and People are up cheering, and, and the wives are biting their fingernails on, on edge because careers are made and lost by a matter of just just ounces. If you don't have chill bumps in, check the old bitch, you're dead. Came in, first person I see is Walker. Dave Walker says he's got a limit. I still was in contention. I thought I'd ruined it for myself, but I still had the potential to win. 
When I pulled them out, you know, there were several other guys. Man, you got a lot more than nine pounds. You got, you know, ten and a half or eleven pounds. Easy. There was renewed hope, you know. I thought, well, maybe I do have a chance. The tournament officials looked at our fish at the ramp and checked them and everything like that, but they didn't tell us anything. We didn't know really what anybody else had, and we started to talk a little bit amongst ourselves. And you know, I talked to Kevin, I talked to Walker, and we thought, yeah, it's gonna come down to some ounces. So there was three of us that were there, and we all knew that about what we had, and we knew it was going to be real close. And they brought us in behind the stage, like, you know, three or four minutes before all this went down. It was like, this is what you're going to do. You're going to do this, and you're going to do that. It's electric. There, there's no other word that I can describe it with. You hear the crowd. You can hear the announcers, but you can't see it. There's five of us kind of standing behind the, uh, a curtain, and we can see through, but nobody can see us. But when they got us behind the, behind the curtain there, and the crowd busted loose with applause and everything for the first time, man. He gave you goosebumps. It was pretty awesome. They had these lights in your face, and all you hear is this big crowd roaring in the back. But And we're standing there, and I'll tell you what, we're, I was sweating bullets. I mean, I was nervous. Everybody sensed that if Van Damme was going to do this, it was going to be now. I've been in contention before, and I sure just didn't, I didn't want to come away from this one. I wanted to win badly. You know, when they opened that curtain up, and we, you know, you, you look out into the Superdome at that crowd, and, and the, the excitement that's there, I mean, you just, I mean, you could just feel it. I'm Kalamazoo, Michigan, Kevin Van Dam. Van Dam had pretty much had the entire Superdome pulling for him going in that last day. They were weighing uh, David Walker's fish in, and, and he was the only one that, you know, we thought, well, he was the one that I thought would beat me. David Walker fishing in his second classic here. He is ready to see what the outcome of this 2001 Bassmasters Classic is going to be. Man, he has got a shot at it. He has got a shot at it. To tell you the truth, to the last minute, me and Kevin had still thought that I had probably won that tournament. I've never been more nervous in my life. I'm telling you what, I am, I'm a total wreck. I mean, I'm kind of supposed to stay over on the side, and then, you know, he's going to announce the wait or whatever, and, and I, you know, hear it then. Well, I couldn't stand to, to wait. I kind of snuck over there and looked at the scale, and, and I saw it. I mean, you could see from the expression that I had, I, you know, I mean, it, it wasn't staged. 10-13. Kevin Van Dam is your classic champion. He's done it. Without a doubt, winning the Classic is the ultimate. You know, that moment was definitely something that I can remember like it was yesterday, and I'm sure it'll be the same 30 years from now. I'll remember that moment. In 2002, Kevin Van Dam added another title to his ever-growing list of accomplishments by winning the ESPY for Best Outdoor Sports Athlete, thereby placing his name in sports history next to the likes of Tiger Woods, Cal Ripken Jr., and Michael Jordan. For Bassmasters Classic Yearbook, I'm Ron Franklin.